Greetings and salutations everyone, my name is Andrew Kirikoff and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Fantasy Football Week 15 running back rankings. So for today's video we're going to be going over the best and worst matchups going into Week 15 of the Fantasy Football season as we try to get to our Fantasy Championships or as we try to get into the next round of our playoffs. Uh, after we go over the matchups, I will be going over my 1 through 36 rankings at the running back position. And that's basically it. So um, without further ado, let's get into it. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Uh, just a reminder, if you're new, many of uh, the stats that I throw out in all of the scoring formats are for half-point PPR. Uh, just making sure everybody knows that. Hope everyone's doing well. We're here on uh, Tuesday. And let's talk about the Monday night game really quickly before we proceed. The big news coming out of that game, besides the fact that a lot of players didn't end up performing well, um, the running backs, you know, Dalvin Cook and Chris Carson, they were fine, which is great. But the quarterbacks, um, they didn't do any favors for themselves and or their receivers. You know, we, we got average games from Diggs and Thielen on top of that. You know, Doug Baldwin not being out there, it doesn't really help that offense not having another weapon. So Tyler Lockett was just okay. And Russell Wilson and Kirk Cousins, they just they weren't great. Now, um, the struggles of Kirk Cousins, a lot of it has to do with the fact that the offensive line is a little beat up and the team is just, they're not looking great. So what the the Vikings did to shake it up as they're, what are they? They're six, their record is 6-6-1 six, six and one as we speak. They're trying to shake it up. They fired offense coordinator John DeFilippo this morning. So hopefully, with the firing of the offensive coordinator, we can open things back up. Maybe this will give us more value to Dalvin Cook. Maybe they can run the ball more. Um, you know, just just open it up a little bit more. We saw what um, Mike McCarthy get fired a week prior, and what happened to the the Packers? They came out and they dropped thirty points. Yes, they were playing against a an, an average defense, or actually a below average defense, in fact. Um, but that it happens, you know. Uh, this coming week, the Vikings are going to be playing against the Dolphins, which is a below average defense. So hopefully the Vikings can turn it around and have some fantasy value going forward. But other than that, you know, anything that stood out to me in that Monday night game, to be honest, not really. Um, just just poor play from both teams. Russell Wilson did not look good. Um, but I guess he got some yards with rushing, about 60 rushing yards. So kind of counts as a touchdown. Uh, as if you look at it, but still not not good enough for um, for being Russell Wilson. Either way, that's just pretty much my thoughts on the matter. Going into next week, the Seahawks they're going to clean out the uh, the Forty ers and the Vikings should be able to take care of business against the Dolphins. That should be a good one. Um, other than that, before we begin talking about running backs, I want to mention there are three games before Sunday this week. Okay, now many of you may not know this, but on Thursday, we have the Kansas City Chiefs against the Chargers. Okay, that is for sure. We know that. Um, we want as many pieces of that game because we know that's going to be a shootout. It will be in Los Angeles. Going to be a fun game. Um, and on Saturday, yes, on Saturday, we have two football games as the NFL tries to prepare us for the Saturday wild card games to try to you know get us used to that kind of a schedule. We have, in fact, the Texans versus the Jets. Uh, Saturday, 1.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then we have the night game between the Browns and the Broncos. So the thing is, you got to get your questions in um, before, you know, at, at least by Friday. If you want them answered um, for those kind of games, get them in by Friday. I'll take care of them on Friday night for sure. Okay, so for those three, spe those two games, the Texans, Jets versus uh, versus the Jets, excuse me, and the uh, Broncos versus the Browns, get those in before Friday. So I have them, get them ready. I can answer them for you guys. Otherwise, normally your questions will be answered by Saturday um, for sure. Anyway, let's get into it, shall we? All right. So again, we're talking about fantasy points given up to the running back position. On a weekly basis, this is a half-point PPR scoring format. All right, so the team that is giving up the most points to the running back position and um, the team that I thought would be completely destroyed last week somehow was able to, to compete with the Chargers. The Cincinnati Bengals still giving up the most points to the running back position. Austin Eckler was able to find that ever-elusive touchdown. Now, speaking of Austin Eckler, we'll go into it a little bit more, but uh, according to the information coming out of the Chargers organization, 
Uh, unfortunately, Austin Eckler is not looking like he's going to play this week. So Justin Jackson, guys, I mean, uh, I've mentioned him last week. Uh, I had him what, ranked within my top 20 last week. I thought he was going to have a fantastic game against the Cincinnati Bengals. Didn't end up going his way. But uh, this coming week, playing against the Kansas City Chiefs on Thursday Night Football on a short week, if Melvin Gordon's not playing, which all signs point towards that, and if Austin Eckler is banged up and injured, it's going to be all Justin Jackson. So that is a guy that if he is still sitting on your waivers, he needs to be picked up. He should have been picked up last week. But either way, I uh, just wanted to throw that out there right now. Um, so who plays against the Cincinnati Bengals this coming week? It's the Oakland Raiders. Um, can we trust in anybody on the Oakland Raiders to come out and have a good week? Uh, perhaps Jalen Richard or Doug Martin. It really depends. If you play... Uh, in like a full PPR league, you might have a little bit more confidence in Jalen Rashard. But we've seen both of these guys split carries down the middle. This team is, they're putting up points. But I personally would rather have, um, you know, shares in Doug Martin. If you're really thin at the running back position, you're looking for a flex. Doug Martin is not a bad play because we've seen him be somewhat productive this season. And he is the goal line back. He's getting majority of the touchdowns, um, five yards and in. So uh, of those two guys, I think I'd lean with with Doug Martin going forward, especially because we haven't seen a lot of Jalen uh, receiving yards as of the last couple games. So um, that's kind of skewed it to the point where Doug Martin's probably the better play between the two. All right, moving on to the Kansas City Chiefs. Again, as I mentioned, Justin Jackson, he is a good play this week uh, playing against the Kansas City Chiefs. The question is, will the um, Los Angeles Chargers have enough time and be able to stay within a scoring range with the Chiefs? So they can run the ball, or are they going to get instantly blown out and have to force Phillip Rivers to throw the ball? Either way, Justin Jackson, we've seen him be used in the passing game. He's going to have a good week this week. Um, I'm always one week uh, too early on players. Sometimes I'll come out and say, hey, this guy's going to have his breakout week. Nope. And then the next week, you know, hopefully that's that's the case this week for those of you who own Justin Jackson. Um, so he's going to be great. Uh, moving on to the number three, uh, the, the third team giving up the most points, giving up nearly 28 fantasy points to the running back position on a weekly basis. It's the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals this coming week, they play against the Falcons. Now, I mentioned this yesterday, and I talked about Ido Smith to an extent because Tevin Coleman, he hasn't been playing well, and Ido Smith is the running uh, you know, the running back on the team that needs the reps. With Devontae be, uh, being out, excuse me, Devontae Freeman being out the entire season, uh, practically the entire season. Tevin Coleman hasn't been able to muster up much success this season. He's had maybe one or two good games. But other than that, you know, I expect Ido Smith to continue to get carries. We saw a lot of, um, you know, production from him this past week, and I expect him to get a lot of carries. So he's a guy that hopefully you've put in a waiver for him and or he is not available. If he's not available in your league, you know, it happens. But um, I, I expect him to be available in many leagues, especially this week. Um, all right, moving on to... <clears throat> the number four, de- the defense giving up the fourth most points, excuse me. Um, that's the Atlanta Falcons, the team that is playing the Arizona Cardinals. Now, on the other side of the ball, we have David Johnson. Now, David Johnson, unfortunately, you know, wasn't able to do anything these past couple weeks. But goodness, I mean, this Arizona Cardinals offense, they are just, they, they're bare bones at this point. Um, having lost Christian Kirk, Josh Rosen not playing well, the offensive line is not doing anybody any favors. And if David Johnson's going to just, if he's going to play like garbage, uh, it's, it's just, I'm not sure if it's technically all his fault, but, you know, it, it happens. Fantasy-wise, that, that's football. You know, if one person doesn't do their job correctly, the play is not going to be successful. And uh, that's what we've seen from this Arizona offense. So going against the Falcons, yes, we, we could probably see David Johnson potentially having a good amount of yards this week, but... Um, I'm not putting too much um, stock into it. He's probably like a high-end RB2 this week. All right, moving on to the t- defense giving up the fifth most points, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, here's the thing about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They play against probably one of the better rushing teams uh, in the league right now. The Baltimore Ravens, a team that really wants to run the ball all week long um, with Kenneth Dixon and Gus Edwards this week. I expect them to have a lot of yards on the ground, and I expect both of them to be fantasy relevant this coming week i expect gus edwards to to maintain his position as a starting running back we've seen him be successful in the last couple weeks but i expect kenneth dixon excuse me kenneth dixon to get a handful of carries 
um, and a bunch of touches in the passing game. We've seen Ty Montgomery a little bit here and there, but this past week wasn't used a lot. So I expect Kenneth Dixon to take a little bit of his carries and his uh, snap counts in order to you know contribute for this team. Uh, moving on, uh, the K- the Cleveland Browns. You know, uh, goodness, Cleveland Browns are going to have their hands full. Philip Lindsay didn't play well this last this past week, but uh, I expect him to have a good game. He should be fine. Uh, moving on, the the Dolphins. Okay, now here here's the thing: the Dolphins. You know, they held. Sony Michelle and James White to like 10 points combined, I think. Some some stupid stat. Um, which is unfortunate, right? The Dolphins are an easier matchup. We've seen teams feast, we've seen players completely blow up against the Dolphins defense, which is not a great run stopping defense. This coming week we have Dalvin Cook um, with the new offensive coordinator going to play against the Miami Dolphins. I expect Dolphin Cook do be good. Um, for those of you, no, do not touch Latavius Murray. He should not be owned anymore. He is handcuffed territory, so if you have an extra spot, sure, maybe. But I'm not sure if Dalvin Cook's going down with another injury. But then again, we've seen him have injuries in the past, so if you want to be safe with it, you could go ahead and pick him up. Uh, but we're not playing him this week. Moving on. The Giants giving up the eighth most points at the running back position. Again, as I mentioned yesterday, Derrick Henry should be one of your pickups if available in your league. Uh, potentially could not, he, he might not be available in your league, but if he is, um, go ahead and pick him up. And I would start him as a, uh, we'll, we'll go over it in the rankings, but I, honestly, I see him as an RB2 this week. The Giants have given up a lot of points. I mentioned it yesterday. They gave up three consecutive games in a row in the past five games in which they gave up 100 yards rushing each. And then two weeks ago against the, um, against the Bears. Jordan Howard had, what, 70, 70, 80 yards rushing, and Tariq Cohen had his 115 receiving yards or something like that on 12 uh, receptions. So this team, they struggle against the running back position. So this coming week, Derrick Henry, Deion Lewis could be good. Um, So moving on, uh, Oakland Raiders, Joe Mixon. Oh, my goodness. Was I wrong about Joe Mixon or what? This dude continues to work and find fantasy value in this week against the Raiders. It's it's a fantastic matchup, and I think he should be able to uh, turn it into gold. Moving on, the Lions giving up some points to the running back position. Uh, the Lions are playing against the Buffalo Bills. Can I trust in a guy like Chris Ivory? Mm, if you're playing in a deeper league, uh, as in maybe a 14, 16 team league, and you have him, there's a potential you know playability between. Um, I don't know. I just. I know LaShawn McCoy is down and they're going to have to run the ball, but I expect a uh, majority of the rushing yards to go to Josh Allen. He's going to carry the ball for a lot of yards. Anyway, playing against the Bills, we have the Lions, uh, who are giving up the, the Bills are giving up the 11th most points to the running back position. Um, honestly, between the three running backs that are available right now, we know Carrion Johnson is still a little bit banged up. I doubt he comes back. We still have LeGarrette Blount. We still have Theo Riddick. We still have Zach Zenner. Uh, I think Zenner's going to be the best one out of those three, to be honest. They saw some production out of him, and I think they haven't really used him a lot this season. So they could come out and um, just start handing him off the ball just to end out the season. We'll see what happens from there. Um, other than that, some of these mid-tier teams, the Chargers giving up some points to the running back position. That's great for Spencer Ware if he's healthy. Maybe Damian Williams, which will go over a little bit. Uh, the Patriots got torched by the running back position this past week. Literally... All of the running backs of the uh, the Dolphins, the three running backs, Bolden, Gore, and Drake, all had 10-plus points, uh, I mean, just easily. And they got completely torched on the ground. So there's a good chance that if, you know, James Conner's healthy, he's going to have a fucking great week. But I just cursed, and uh, maybe you guys can deal with it. Uh, moving on. Also, Jalen Samuels is not a bad – I mean – he, he looked decent this past week. He had a bunch. I think he had about seven receptions. So in a PPR, he's good. Um, especially if you still play in a uh, if you play in a Yahoo league and he can play as your tight end position. If he's healthy, I mean, if uh, James Conner is not healthy, there's a good chance that Jalen Samuels is still going to get the start. And they're going to have to use him this coming week. And if the Patriots are still giving up points to the running back position like they did this past week, Jalen Samuels could be good. Uh, other than that, the Seahawks playing against, okay, J- you know, Jeff Wilson, we saw him two weeks back, uh, but the question is, does Matt Breida come back? We'll see. Um, moving on, speaking of Matt Breida, the 49ers are giving up a bunch of points to the running back position. I expect Chris Carson to continue to be good. The Colts, um, I-, I expect Ezekiel Elliott to be able to fe- the feast on them. Uh, the Eagles, I expect Todd Gurley to be, okay, Todd Gurley better come back. For those of you who own Todd Gurley, you know, you, you, <laughs> You drafted him with your first overall pick, perhaps your second overall pick, because someone in your league 
decided to draft Le'Veon Bell number one overall. Or they went crazy and drafted somebody else. Okay, it doesn't matter. But for those of you who go into Todd Gurley, um, if, if if I had no soul, I'd be like, okay, I hope you guys all lose. But that's not the that's not the case. I actually, I want to see Todd Gurley succeed. Why? Because I'm a Rams fan too. Okay, so the, I'm playing devil's advocate. If I play a guy with Todd Gurley, but I'm a Rams fan, what do I want to happen? Do I want the Rams to lose? Probably not. But then again, we'll see. Um, anyway, as of right now, uh, he should be able to feast against the Eagles. The Eagles have been giving up a bunch of points on the ground as of late, um, especially to, to Zeke, who's been tearing them up as of late. So uh, moving on, let's see. Um, the Jets, okay, Broncos, Packers, blah, blah. We'll go into those kind of things later. But other than that, uh, the, the tougher matchups, we know it. We've talked about it to an extent on a weekly basis in the last couple of weeks. The Ravens, the Bears, and the Saints, they, and the Titans, the Cowboys, those five teams right there. You do not want to play running backs into those matchups. Uh, and if you do, understand that there is a there's a chance that you know your guy might perform, right? And likelihood is you're going to perform, but there's always an there's an opportunity or a uh, there's a possibility that your guy just gets completely clamped down. Now, who plays against these teams? The Ravens play against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa Bay Buccaneers don't have a running back. Uh, I do not classify Peyton Barber as running back. So we're moving on. So do not play and do not play any running backs for the uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Moving on to the Chicago Bear matchup, Aaron Jones is going to have a hell of a time doing anything this coming week. We saw them stop Todd Gurley in that offense, clean his day uh and the struggles that Aaron Rodgers has had I understand he had a successful week this past week but you have to play against Chicago and that is not going to be an easy matchup to say the least so Aaron Jones is gonna he's gonna have you know one of the tougher matchups uh this is not gonna be a great week um moving on to number yeah the the third best team against the defense uh, against the running back excuse me defensively the Saints, who have given up only 13 points per game in the last couple weeks, guys. I'm telling you, if they are available on your waiver wire, pick them up this week. I do not expect Cam Newton in that Carolina Panthers offense to be able to produce much this week. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, still, you know, you're starting him up. You're hoping that he is going to be effective and efficient enough to get yourself some fantasy value. And I hope for, for everyone's sake that he's able to be productive. But if we end up seeing the Saints be pretty good defensively, we're not going to be surprised. Same thing with the Tennessee Titans. If Saquon Barkley, you know, he's going into a tough matchup. The Tennessee Titans are still trying to make a playoff push. If Odell Beckham is out, right, and they stack the box with eight people, I'm not sure if they're going to find much success. You know, can Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram create some plays? Can Eli Manning live without um, a guy like Odell Beckham, especially against a tougher defense? If they stack the box, it can be some trouble. But then again, you're Saquon Bar- you have Saquon Barkley. You got to start him up. He's been great all season long, um, and honestly, he's just he's he's unbelievable. Uh, other than that, the Cowboys play against the um, the Colts. Marlon Mack is going to have a tough matchup, to say the least. We've seen the the Cowboys in the last couple weeks completely destroy the running back position. Uh, let me go ahead and pull up these stats, shall we? Um, here we are, Dallas Cowboys. What have they been doing to the running back position as of late? Okay, so this past week, right, against a guy like Josh Adams, they killed Josh Adams, uh, only allowed seven rushes for 36 yards. Now, they give up 11 points to Darren Sproles, but that was on a reception. We're not going to count that. Darren Sproles is too elusive. Uh, going on to the, the game prior, same thing. They gave up 11 points to Alvin Kamara, but that was all in the passing game. Other than that, you know, on the ground, they only gave up 36 yards again. That's the second week in a row they're only giving up 36 yards to the leading rusher on the other team. The week after, or before that, excuse me, they only gave up 35 rushing yards to Adrian Peterson. So that's another game of 36 or fewer rushing yards to the opposing team. Uh, and the week prior to that against Washington, or sorry, against the Atlanta Falcons, they only gave up 58 yards rushing to um, Tevin Coleman. I mean, they've, they've looked really good stopping the run. I mean, they haven't given up a hundred yard rusher this season since week three the highest rushing yard uh game they've given up like in the last couple weeks is in week 7 99 to adrian peterson and that was literally the last time that it was above 62 yards so this coming week i'm not really i'm not looking towards marlon mack okay guys just just uh just be very careful anyway let's go ahead let's move on let's talk about my rankings for this coming week as we get into 
Um, pretty much talking about how this is maybe going to play out. You never know. This is fantasy football. It's unpredictable. But really quickly, before we begin, I want to talk about right here, down here, uh, Austin Eckler and James Conner. I expect Austin Eckler not to play. Therefore, I have not included him in my uh, rankings here. I also do not expect James Conner to play this week. Uh, therefore, I have put him down here. Now, if in fact Austin Eckler does end up playing, um, he is in within my top 20. For sure, if he ends up playing, he's a top 20 play. Um, against the Kansas City Chiefs, they're going to have to throw the ball a lot. And I expect Austin Eckler to be used in the passing game in order to help the, the Chargers pick up a W. So, um, yeah, I, I would have Austin Eckler within my top 20. Now, same thing with James Conner. If James Conner plays uh, against the Patriots of all teams, uh, I would have him within my top 10, to be honest. I, I'd probably have him uh, before Leonard Fournette, so I'd have him at n- ranked 9. Um, so that's basically it. Just wanted to put that out there. But that is if they play. We haven't seen any you know, news saying that they are going to. Uh, James Conner did not participate in practice, and neither did Austin Eckler today. Austin Eckler's on a shorter week, so James Conner has an opportunity that later on in the week, maybe on Saturday, he can get a full clear, get a full practice in uh, through the walkthrough. But Austin Eckler, he's... Um, he's against the clock, and it's it's not looking good for him. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the top 36 rankings. Number one, we have Todd Gurley going against the Eagles. Um, the Eagles have been struggling as of late uh, to the you know against the running game. And to be honest, Todd Gurley, for all of us who own you in fantasy, please have a fantastic game, drop 30 points, and uh, win us some fantasy championships, just like he did last year. You know, last season, uh, Todd Gurley owners, many of you know, you probably have a championship sitting on your shelf somewhere, okay? Or you, it's in your heart, right? You, you know it for a fact, right? But um, last season, in the, in the fantasy playoffs, this guy was dropping 30 a, me- a week, okay? We need to go back to that. We need to go back to final form Todd Gurley. You know, the, um, the Rams, as of right now, they're not going to be the number one seed going into the playoffs on the NFC side. So there is a chance that they may sit players in week 17, but they're definitely playing in the next two weeks. The next two weeks, they're getting after it. They're going to beat the crap out of the Eagles, and then they're going to follow that up with killing the Cardinals. So um, hopefully Todd Gurley, and I expect him, he should be the number one running back for sure this week. All right, let's talk about number two, Ezekiel Elliott, playing against the Colts this week. Ezekiel Elliott is insane. He had 12 receptions this past week. 12 receptions. I mean, uh, it's incredible. Uh, That is exactly what you need Ezekiel Elliott to do. Had another 25-point game. Uh, That's, what, seven weeks in a row of 20-plus point games and half-point PPR scoring formats in a full-point PPR. You are ecstatic. You are losing your mind. Ezekiel Elliott had a fantastic week, and I expect him to continue to be great as the Cowboys continue to surge forward. Playing against the Colts this week should be a high-scoring matchup. But then again, um, the Cowboys' defense is good. Um, and the Colts' defense, they looked decent this past week against the, uh, Deshaun Watson. So you never know. But either way, I expect both teams to score fantasy-wise. Moving on to number three, Saquon Barkley. As I mentioned uh, a little bit uh, before, they play against the Tennessee Titans, a team that is pretty tough against the running game. Uh, they stopped Leonard Fournette pretty solidly. So if they can apply the same pressure to Eli Manning, if they can stack the box, they can force them to have to throw the ball, that is going to be a little bit of trouble for Saquon Barkley. But either way, we are starting him up. He is a monster. He is the rookie of the year. He Next season, okay, if this team can get a little bit better offensive line, if they can improve the quarterback position, okay, and if they can stay healthy defensively, offensively, my goodness, whoo. Saquon Barkley might be coming off the board in the first three picks. Um, Anyway, moving on to number four. We have Alvin Kamara playing against the Carolina Panthers on a Monday night. Man, I wish Alvin Kamara would um, would just get involved in the passing game a little bit more, man. This this Saints offense, man, they've struggled in the last couple weeks. And to be honest, I I could see them struggling again this coming week. But then again... um, I expect them. They're, they are a top-tier team. They have to turn it around. They play against the Panthers, which is a familiar opponent within the division. So, And they've had success. Last season, they beat the Panthers in both games. I expect them to do the same thing in the next three weeks, beat the Panthers twice. Uh, Alvin Kamara is a big part of that. He's my number four this week. Number five, we have Christian McCaffrey playing against the Saints. 
Um, on the other side of the ball, right, we have Cam Newton with an injured shoulder. He has struggled. He's visibly not Cam Newton, right? He has not looked good um, in the last two weeks. Thrown five interceptions in the last two weeks. Um, that is nothing to be happy about, to say the least. Christian McCaffrey, in that you know vein, is still going to get a lot of production. He's going to get the ball out of the backfield. He's going to be catching the ball out of the backfield. And uh, he should be fantasy relevant as usual. He's my number five. Number six, Philip Lindsay, playing on Saturday night again against the Cleveland Browns. Should have a great week. Um, man, Philip Lindsay, I just I can't stop talking about this guy. Had a had a you know pretty tough week this past week, but that's mainly because of the fact that the uh, <laughs> the offense of the the Broncos could not stop going. They went forward on fourth down, I think, seven times, and they only converted like three of them. Some terrible. I don't even know what they were doing. They were just. Uh, they were trying to save or salvage their season. I thought they'd win out their games, but they somehow managed to find a way to lose to the 49ers and Greg Kittle. Um, moving on to number seven, we have Nick Chubb talking about the Cleveland Browns. Nick Chubb continues to get work. Duke Johnson, who? Exactly. It's Nick Chubb all day. He should be great this coming week. I expect him to have a great night on Saturday. Um, Fantasy-wise, he continues to get a bunch of carries. He continues to get work in the passing game. He's the goal line back of that team. And for those of you who ended up picking him up or had him stashed on your bench, uh, congratulations. He is doing work, uh, and he's continuously being fantasy relevant. Moving on to number eight, we have Joe Mixon. Wow. Joe Mixon. I literally said last week, Joe Mixon is going to probably be, uh, you know, as an RB2 rest of the season. Dude, Joe Mixon is letting me have it. He's just had some great weeks. In the last couple of weeks, uh, getting involved in the passing game more and more, finding himself, you know, some fantasy relevancy, and um, he's helping fantasy owners out, which is fantastic. And this coming week against the Raiders has a fantastic matchup, so I expect them to be good. Moving on to number nine, we have Leonard Fournette. They're playing against the Redskins, and I don't expect the Redskins to do much. They give up a bunch of yards to Saquon Barkley. I expect Leonard Fournette to continue to get involved within this offense. As I mentioned before, he is the offense of this team. Uh, so he is the number one option. I expect him to have a bounce back game. He's my number nine. Um, you know, many of you, I, I I know, he killed you this past week. But what are you going to do? You're going to leave Leonard Fournette on your bench going into week 15? I don't think I could do that. So he's starting for me for sure. All right, number 10, we have Chris Carson playing against the 49ers. Now, Chris Carson probably should be a higher ranking but perspectively, like when you have Rashad Penny back there, you have Mike Davis potentially coming to steal some snaps. Um, it it reduces your value a tad bit. So other than that, you know Chris Carson should be a fantastic play. Uh, looked good last uh, last night against the uh, Minnesota Vikings defense, which is a tougher matchup, but still looked good against the defense. Playing against the 49ers, it's going to be an easy matchup, and they're going to blow them out. He's going to have a great game. Moving on to number 11, Spencer Ware. Asterix is next to him if he is healthy. He is my number 11 um, in a matchup in which, you know, the, the Chargers are giving up a good amount of points to the running back position on a weekly basis. On top of that, uh, Spencer Ware has looked good as of the last two weeks. This last week, what, 15 carries, 75 yards, and a touchdown. Um, even with, you know, having to leave the game um, in the middle of it because of that injury he sustained, looked good. He was fantasy, you know, excellent um, for the amount of the plays he was in the game. Damian Williams, right, the... Backup running back that came into the game. He ended up taking two touchdowns, but I expect Spencer Ware to be the guy that if he is healthy, he's going to get those touchdowns. So this coming week, he's my number 11. Number 12, we have Lamar Miller uh, playing against the Jets. Now, here's here's the thing, okay? If, in fact, Lamar Miller doesn't end up doing well this week, it is 100% because of Alfred Blue. Now, Alfred Blue continues to get fantasy attempts. He continues to be decent. If I think he had a rushing touchdown this past week. Um, He's a guy that, honestly, uh, if you're playing in a super deep league and there's nobody available, Alfred Blue is not a terrible option. So, you know, dude, the guy, he gets a bunch of touches. Oh, my goodness. Why does he get 13 attempts? What is this? We should be handing off the ball to Lamar Miller. Either way, Lamar Miller, they play against the the Jets this week. It should be an easy matchup. I expect him to be able to uh, succeed in that. I'm moving on to 13. Hopefully, Dalvin Cook can turn it around, have himself a fantastic week. Um, I expect the offense to open up a little bit more and for them to pass the ball more uh, because if Diggs and Thielen are not getting over 100 receiving yards apiece per game, 
they're doing something wrong within that offense. So obviously they'll continue to run the ball to try to establish their offense and set up play action. But uh, Dalvin Cook, he's still a good running back. He He's a uh, top tier, uh, low end RB1, uh, high end RB2 this coming week. Uh, honestly, he has a really good matchup. So if they fully commit to the Dalvin Cook, he can be a top five running back this week for sure. He's got the talent. Just got to give him the opportunity. We haven't seen much opportunity. Hopefully the offensive coordinator change will give him some. Moving on to number 14, David Johnson. As I mentioned before, they play against the um, the Atlanta Falcons, giving up the third most fantasy points to the uh, to the running back position. He should have a good week. But then again, he plays for the Cardinals. So Cardinals fans, I'm sorry. It's unfortunate. You guys are in the rebuilding process. David Johnson has not looked good as of late. And fantasy-wise, these guys are just, he's, ah, oh, man. He's just, he's been a disappointment. So, uh, we'll see what happens, but it's a good matchup, so hopefully he can end up breaking off some runs. Uh, moving on to 15, Tariq Cohen. Now, I expect Tariq Cohen and Jordan Howard to both be good this week. They're both being used at a pretty decent amount. We, we saw, what, Jordan Howard have 15-plus um, carries each of the last two weeks, and Tariq Cohen is continuing to be fantasy relevant. He's just got to continue to get passes out of the backfield in order to continue to increase his value via the PPR format. Uh, moving on to 16, Jalen Samuels. Even if James Conner does not play, the running backs of the Dolphins killed the Patriots. And if you're going to have to take your Patriots team into Pittsburgh, it is going to be a good game, to say the least, but it's going to be a difficult matchup. Jalen Samuels should be good. I expect him to be great, especially if you can throw him at the tight end spot in the Yahoo format. Why not? We're moving on to number 17, Justin Jackson. If Austin Eckler does not play, I expect... Um, uh, just sorry if Austin Eckler does not play I expect Justin Jackson to have a fantastic week um, he you know obviously didn't get as many carries as we wanted this past week against Cincinnati Bengals was a closer game than we thought um, but this coming week if he is used within this offense he's going to get majority if not all the touches out of the backfield and majority of the catches which will keep him fantasy relevant all right moving on to 18 Aaron Jones here's my issue with Aaron Rodgers you know injuries and his struggles this season is there a possibility that the Bears completely get after him and make him look like Jared Goff did on Sunday night? There's a possibility. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is that bad, but the the issue is, can Aaron Jones find himself fantasy value against such a good rush um, uh, running defense, a uh, run-stopping defense, excuse me? Um, I expect it to be a very difficult matchup for him. And uh, Aaron Jones owners, yes, you have to start him because he's Aaron Jones and he's going to be you know, probably one of your top three running backs in your roster, but he's he's just a tougher play for me personally. Uh, all right, let's move on to the last 18 guys I wanted to mention. Number 19, we have Derrick Henry playing against the Giants. As I've mentioned before, you know, that last week was fantastic. I expect him to continue to get a bunch of carries. Obviously, we're not going to see 200 yards and four touchdowns, but hopefully we're going to see like 60 yards and a touchdown on like 15 carries. That is what, what I'm expecting because Deion Lewis is still going to be used within this offense. So, I expect Derrick Henry to be decent. He's my number 19. Number 20, we have Gus Edwards. Yes, I've mentioned Kenneth Dixon to an extent, but I still expect Ken, uh, Gus Edwards to be used, you know, about 15 touches a game. He's not going to work in the passing game, but he should be good on the ground because this team loves to run the ball as much as they do. Um, they almost love to run the ball as much as the Seahawks, to be honest. All right, moving on to 21, we have Jordan Howard. Like I've mentioned, in the last two weeks, he's had over, what, 80 rushing yards each game, continues to get 15-plus carries. Um, so he is pretty much carving out himself a role within this team. As the season progresses, they're going, and especially with the cold weather, they're going to run the ball. They're going to dictate the game through the run. They're going to have themselves, you know, they have a great defense. They can stop the teams via defense. They're going to bruise you offensively with the running game. They look good. And Jordan Howard, this coming week against the uh, Packers, could have himself a good week. He's the goal line back as well, so I expect him to be fantasy relevant. Moving on to number 22, we have Sony Michelle. All right, here's the thing about Sonny Michel. The last couple weeks, he's had his fantasy value completely stripped because of James Devlin. You know, the goal line back for the Patriots is Sonny Michel. Without a doubt, we know that for a fact. But the issue is, James Devlin has taken away three touchdowns in the last two weeks. Now, can Sonny Michel end up catching a touchdown, rushing a touchdown this coming week? It's absolutely possible. He's capable of doing it. But will they give him the ball? I don't expect them to give James Devlin the ball every time they're down there. But I still think that if Sony Michelle is not capable of getting into the end zone, his fantasy value is stripped away. And he's just, he's an RB2 at best with upside of a touchdown. But 
Uh, I bet, especially going against the Pittsburgh Steelers, it's a tough matchup. All right, moving on to number 23, Jeff Wilson Jr. playing against the Seahawks. Last time we saw him against the Seahawks, looked good. Hopefully, um, this is assuming that Matt Breida does not play. Uh, I've not heard any information. I do not know if he has practiced today. I'm sure somebody has that update. I probably should look it up. Let's go ahead and uh, let's look up Matt Breida, shall we? All right, Matt Breida, did you practice today? Because that's that's a pretty good sign. If Matt Breida practiced today, then we'll know. If, um, we'll have a okay. Let's see, uh, Matt Breida, what did you do today? Mm, do 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 do. We don't have an update on him. Wow. Uh, Matt Breida aggravated his uh, pre-existing ankle injury. Blah blah blah. Nope. Okay. Uh, no information. So Jeff Wilson, congratulations. You're still at 23. Moving on to 24, Mark Ingram. Man, Mark Ingram had a monster touchdown run. Now this coming week against the Panthers, I expect him to continue to get his his you know five to ten carries uh, throughout the game. The question is if he can continue to be fantasy relevant like that and have those rushing touchdowns, he can be great. But for you know Alvin Kamara owners, it's not going to look good if if Mark Ingram's coming in and taking those carries away. I expect them to use Mark Ingram more and more. They need to get back to their two headed monster stuff. They need to literally just give them each. 15 touches a game. But, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Either way, he's my 24. Number 25, Ido Smith. I am full in with Ido Smith. Forget about who? Tevin Coleman who? I don't remember. I don't know what a Tevin Coleman is. Um, so, as of right now, Ido Smith this coming week against the Cardinals. Very, very good matchup. And, um, he, you know, he got a good enough attempts last week. Hopefully, they're convinced to give him the ball this week. Number 26, James White. Thanks for... Uh, not doing me any favors last week, James White. You were great for about seven consecutive games. You know what? Actually, you were great all season long. You guys went on a bye week. You came back, and you've been terrible. <sighs> it's the curse of Rex Burkhead. I'm telling you, as soon as Rex Burkhead got pulled off IR, James White disappeared. It feels bad. All right, moving on. 27. Tough matchup for Marlon Mack. Playing against the Cowboys. I mentioned it before. In the last, what, five, six weeks, they have given up maximum 37 rushing yards. Um, in a single game to a single running back. Uh, the Cowboys hurt against the passing game for running backs. So Marlon Mack, can he produce in the passing game? Sure, but I would expect Neem Hines to be the better of the two, and he's not looking great as a late. So the Colts' backfield, nah, not really buying into it. Number 28, we have Josh Adams. Struggled heavily this past week. Saw very minimal amount of carries. Twenty, uh, Sorry, well, uh, he had about seven carries for 36 yards. Just not good. This week plays against the Rams, which is a you know it's a decent matchup. We saw Jordan Howard run for 100 yards. Can Josh Adams do it? Um, potentially, but well, just eh, RB three flex. Moving on to number 29, you know Kenyon Drake. Here's my only concern with Kenyon Drake. He still doesn't get any carries. He still doesn't get. I mean, this dude just won you the game, okay, off of one play. But will he come back this week and end up getting some carries? I doubt it. This offense, I mean, just reading his stats in the last three weeks, fantasy-wise, 24.10, 11.4, 14.4. Okay? The last play of the game, that's, you know, it doesn't happen on a weekly basis. But if he doesn't get that touchdown, he pretty much ends up with, what, three fantasy points this past week? Either way, playing against Minnesota is going to be a tougher matchup. Hopefully, they're going to show this man some love and get him the ball more. He's my number 29. Number 30, we have Kenneth Dixon. As I mentioned before, they play against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, giving up the fifth most points to the running back position. Even though I see Gus Edwards, who's up there at 20, being fantasy relevant this week, Kenneth Dixon is going to continue to get more and more touches. We saw Ty Montgomery practically disappear this past week. Only had, what, two carries on the ground and one reception. Uh, Kenneth Dixon is going to be cutting into his um, attempts and snap counts. He's going to be fantasy relevant this week. I expect them to continue to run the ball with these two guys. And uh, especially with Lamar Jackson injured, they got to make sure he doesn't escape the pocket and get hurt even more. Moving on to number 31, Ken, uh, we have Deion Lewis playing against the Giants. As I mentioned before, the Giants really struggle against the, uh, the run and against Derrick Henry. You know, if you can put both those guys out on the field, have to cover them both, uh, it's going to be tough for the Giants. I expect Deion Lewis to at least have some sort of value this coming week as an RB3 flex, especially in a PPR Moving on to 32 is Elijah McGuire. Finally, they gave Elijah McGuire some damn carries. 16 carries this past week. Had himself a rushing touchdown. 15 fantasy points in a half-point PPR format. This week, he gets the Texans on Saturday. That is not a fun matchup. But 
Then again, if Elijah McGuire, we saw, oh, report, here it is. Um, Isaiah Crowell was seen at practice wearing a boot. So therefore, Elijah McGuire, congratulations, you are the starting running back. So for those of you who are you know looking thin, there you go. There's a starting running back for an NFL team. I don't care if they get blown out. That's even better. Elijah McGuire might get work in the passing game. Moving on to 33, Adrian Peterson, who has not looked good um, since you know his two quarterbacks have gone down practically. Um, Josh Johnson came back in or came into the game after they replaced um, Mark Sanchez. <clears throat> I doubt Adrian Peterson's able to do anything these couple of weeks. He plays against the Jaguars. Now the Jaguars just came off a game where they gave up 240 yards and four touchdowns to a singular running back. Uh, and Adrian Peterson, you know, he's a good running back. He's he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. But can he do that kind of stuff? There's always a chance. If the Jacksonville Jaguars just, just don't want to tackle this week, they're just, they've given up. There's a chance, but I doubt it. I really don't think um, they're gonna they're gonna come out and get embarrassed like that again. But you never know. All right, moving on. 34. Doug Martin, as I mentioned, he has the highest upside of a touchdown. I know this is for half point PPR scoring formats, but we haven't seen Jalen Richard used in the passing game in the last couple weeks. So Doug Martin, between the running backs of the Raiders, he is on this list. He's my number 34. Number 35, we have Damian Williams. As I mentioned before, he's a Chiefs running back. He probably should be picked up in your leagues. Uh, he's a guy that should be maybe played if um, Spencer Ware does not play. If Spencer Ware does not play, Damian Williams is a top 24 running back this coming week because we've seen him used in the passing game, uh, especially in the last two weeks. So uh, even if he if he's not the starting running back, he could have value. Like Honestly, I, I expect him to still be used because, yes, um, Spencer Ware is a starting running back, but they're not going to use him every single down, especially if he's a little banged up. So Damian Williams could find himself some value within this offense. Uh, and especially because Sammy Watkins is hurt. Tyree Kill is banged up with that little bit of a knee injury there. They've got to take care of their players if they want to make a big run this season. So they got to use as many backups as they can. Damian Williams is going to get some reps. The last guy I wanted to mention, Zach Zenner, running back for the Lions. I doubt Carryon Johnson comes back this week. Theo Riddick has not seen much as of late in LeGarrette Blunt. I don't know if they're going to use him. They used him just as much as they used Zenner, but Zenner was able to be more effective with his yards, uh, sorry, per attempt, and he was able to get in the end zone. So Zenner, you're my 36. And that's basically it, everybody. If you have any questions, go hit me down below. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, at Kirchhoff. Other than that, um, I will get to your questions. Please get in those Saturday questions before, you know, on Friday so I can answer them Friday night after I get home from work. Uh, and that's basically it. So I want to thank everybody for watching. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. We will be talking about wide receivers. So if you have any wide receiver questions, hold on to them. I will answer them tomorrow. Trying, I'll try to answer them via the rankings so it'll give you a better idea. But, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Anyway, hopefully we uh, get our waiver wire pickups and uh, end up being good. So I'll see you guys later.